Greetings from Key West. My name is Chris Ream, also known as Key West Chris. I am a musician, a songwriter, an author, and for fun, I do things in the kitchen. Today we're going to be talking about something called Old Sour. Uh, what it is, how it got here, how it came about, how you use it. It's an interesting history because it, it came to the Keys from Green Turtle Key in the Bahamas. And what happened there was after the American Revolution, which ended in 1782, a, there, there were a group, there were the people that supported the king and they weren't treated that well. So they, most of them went to British territories. They went to Canada, England. And in this case, there was a group that left Massachusetts and went to Green Turtle Key in the Bahamas. And they settled there, had families and whatnot. And about 20, 30 years after that, the second generation, uh, a lot of them started coming to the Keys to do fishing and they settled here, some of them brought houses over here, and they were born in the Bahamas for the most part, uh, and there were Caucasian Bahamians. Caucasian Bahamians, or white Bahamians if you will, are called conks. So that's how conks ended up here, and they settled throughout the Keys. from from Key Largo to Key West. One of the things they had in the Bahamas that they brought with them was this condiment called Old Sour. Uh, you can spell O-L-D, sour, or O-L apostrophe. Either way is correct. Uh, but what they would do is they'd use it with salt and pepper and put it on anything that they were eating and then put salt and pepper on it. So you see on the table be salt, pepper, and the old sour, and it's a liquid. It's what happened was they used to they would use uh, key lime juice, which, like any other fruit, it has its season and it has its off season. So in season they could just put put the key lime juice on whatever they wanted to, but in the off season they wouldn't have any. So they had to they came up with this method of preserving it, and what they would use would be whiskey bottles, small. 16, 12, 16 ounce bottles, and they'd squeeze the lime and make the old sour in there. And so that way they, they'd have it for the entire year if they wanted it. It does have a different flavor uh, than the key lime juice does as well, so it's a little bit different. You can use it either one. In any case, let's take a look at a key lime. Here's a key lime. Here's a Persian lime. This is a small Persian lime. This is about your typical key lime. You know, not, not some Persian limes would be about this big. So it's significantly larger than uh, the key lime. And But the thing about the key lime is it probably has, I'm going to guess, between five and ten times the acidic qualities of its juice than Persian limes. You can't make old sour with Persian limes. You have to use key limes. Now what they would do to preserve it was a very simple process. Now, you can, if you want, you can go out and you can squeeze your key limes. I've got a whole bag here. I prefer just using uh, this brand here, which is really good. Uh, I'll put it up close, you probably can see. It has a lot of sediment in there, which is what you do want. Uh, there's another brand out there that doesn't, it, it's got a, you can't see that. Uh, it's not nearly as acidic. I don't know what they make it out of, but Mrs. Biddle's is the way to go. And it's a very simple recipe. Uh, what you do is you're going to take... Now, I use a Scotch bonnet pepper. In the Bahamas, they have a pepper called a goat pepper. I've never had a goat pepper. I've read about them. And there are some people that say a goat pepper and a scotch bonnet are the same pepper with two different names. Other people say they're different, but they have extremely similar characteristics. The heat level on a scotch bonnet and, and the goat pepper is about 350,000 Scoville units, which is the same, the same as a, the, a sister pepper to them, the habanero. The thing about the, the uh, scotch bonnet and the goat pepper versus the habanero is that the habanero has a lot of heat to it, of course, but in addition to heat, the scotch bonnet has a very floral, 
an aromatic flavor to it, which is much, it, it's just fabulous for cooking. Uh, so what I've done is I've cut one of these up right over here, and we're going to put it in the lime juice. Now back in the day, when the Bahamians were making it in the Bahamas and in the Keys, <clears throat> they, they would have uh, their own trees in their yard, and that's where they would get their key limes from. It's not like you're going to drive through the Keys and see orchards of key limes. It doesn't exist. Everyone had, it was kind of like a, just a family thing where you'd have it in your backyard. Everyone had their own, and they, that's how they made them. Okay, then in this shot glass, I have two tablespoons of what I, I use kosher sea salt because some recipes call for kosher salt and other recipes call for sea salt. Alessi makes a kosher sea salt and it's, it's really cheap, it's like three bucks. Okay, so then put the salt in here, I've put the scotch bonnet in there, then I'm going to shake it up, give it a good shake. All right. Then I'm going to put today's date on it. Because I'm going to get a few of these, that way you know when you made it. Today is 420. Okay. Then I'm going to set that aside. You want it to sit for a minimum of two weeks. No longer. Just straight two weeks. Uh, then after that you can use it. It gets better as time goes on. Uh, I've had a, I've had some that have been a year old and they're just outrageous. The heat from the pepper will not kick in right off the bat. It'll, it'll take a couple, ah, sometimes a month, sometimes three months before the, the heat from the pepper comes in. No one does. You got some cool stuff. So in any case, that's it. Very simple to make. Uh, it's a legend in the Conch Republic and the Bahamas, and that's where it came from. Like I say, you'll find it in, in homes, you won't find it so much in restaurants. There's uh, now a resurgence coming up where there's some restaurants that are, have just decided, they just, when I say they just started making it, I mean they just started making it, like last week. Um, Smoke and Tune is making it, AMB Seafood is making it, and the Hogfish out on Stock Island is making it. Hopefully there'll be more, uh, but those are places that you will find it on the tables. And make your own. I mean, it's, it's really simple. It's, there's nothing to it. And maybe you'll like it, hopefully. Thanks so much. Appreciate you watching. Have a great day. All the best from Key West. And, oh, that's my new album play. going to be out soon. It's not out yet. I'll let you know. Thanks.